Hello and welcome to the Philippines. I took a long walk yesterday, a very long walk, and then I decided to take a horse buggy ride around a couple of blocks downtown Cebu City, or so I thought. Well, it turns out these horse and buggies are ac actually modes of transportation. And about 10 or 12 minutes later, I was a long ways from downtown uh, Cebu City, and I had to walk back again, so I got lots of exercises. 10 pesos, 20 U.S. cents. I had walked uh, to downtown Cebu City from SM Seaside Mall, and this horse isn't really interested in uh, continuing to work here today. But we have, we have five passengers, and we're stuck in here. There's very little room for our knees. So, uh, if you don't like touching your fellow passengers, this would not be the way to ride. Anyway, that that horse, I didn't see any any water in the area. You know, they get they get water and food in the morning probably and in the evening. Um, I just happened to come upon these big line of horses. They're six, seven, eight, or more, and then several on the road as well. And people use these as transportation. A jeepney would cost them. In fact, jeepneys don't even run, I think, some of the streets we were on. A uh, jeepney would cost uh, eight pesos, I believe. And the horse and carriage with uh, five or six passengers, 10 pesos apiece, 20 US cents. I had asked where where he was going and I it was my understanding we were just going to go around you know several blocks come back and get out and uh, the driver didn't speak very much English the other passengers uh, I asked them if they spoke English they said no not very much I don't know enough Messiah to carry on a conversation definitely and uh, anyway they told me where we were going, but I had no idea where we were going. But uh, I was up for the ride. They asked me where I wanted to go. And I said, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm going to go wherever this horse takes me. And uh, that's happened a couple times as I was growing up as a kid, too. I had a couple horses. Occasionally those horses would, would grab that, that bit in their mouth and uh, head for home. And you would go wherever they wanted to go. There are certain types of bits you can uh, use in the mouth of horses to have better control. But uh, anyway, interesting ride. We're going into the sun, directly into the sun. So uh, the video is a little bit of washed out. And uh, anyway, some of the passengers uh, got out uh, along, the along the route. And this guy turned around and went back empty. I could have, for another 10 pesos, I could have rode back as well. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to walk around and see the area. Completely different area, just like being in, a, being in a completely different city. The area I was dropped off in, and the uh, area within a kilometer or two all around there, was, as I say, it looked like a completely different city. The character of the area the the vehicles in fact a large portion of the vehicles were these little uh, electric tricycles and uh, they were working as hobble hobbles also they were uh, well they don't call them hobble hobble because they're not a motorbike I guess uh, but small little electric tricycles and uh, they would offer to take you different places all the way back out to Seaside or down into the Clone Street area. Some wouldn't go that far. Uh, but they require no license and no registration at that time. I get the feeling that's going to change uh, sometime in the future. One of the congressmen uh, here was complaining that uh, they should not be legal because the government's not making any money off them. There again, because no license required, no registration at this time. And they're going slower. Sometimes they're uh, they're slowing down traffic, just like the pedicabs are. But anyway, we took a little uh, to get off the main road. I think 
we took this other road for a bit and uh, then we get on a narrower street uh, other traffic mu must love these horse and carriages because they there are times we had to stop we had to stop and let vehicles or motorbikes pass cars pass yeah the, the street is that narrow if you get bored in your city in your town in the province that you're staying in uh, in the Philippines my suggestion is uh, get out of your house your condo your hotel and go explore a little bit and uh, you know if you're if you're around areas that may have some dangers for different reasons uh, NPA or certain parts of this town I've been told there are certain parts of Cebu City or Mandawi City uh, Paknaan, for instance, over in Man Mandawi City, I've, I've been told by uh, a lady that they, they haven't cleaned, quote-unquote, cleaned that area up yet. And uh, you still get more pickpockets and thieves and that type of thing, drug dealers, who drug users who are more apt to uh, be aggressive and... Uh, ruin your day put it that way anyway at one point in time we had a, a kid with a uh, with a pedicab he was pedaling his little bicycle with the side cart on it and he grabbed on he grabbed on to the back I tried to charge him 10 pesos for the free ride since he didn't have to pedal uh, but he didn't think that was a good idea a couple of months ago, uh, it was in the news, one of these horses dropped dead uh, from exhaustion, not enough water, whatever it was. And uh, there was kind of a brouhaha about that, of course. And my own feeling, uh, you know, these, these horses are not camels. And I've, I've had horses and ridden them in hot summer days. And boy, when they get a chance to drink water, they drink water. They drink as much as they can uh, because they sweat. They're not camels. They don't hold huge quantities of water in, in, inside their bodies. And uh, my feeling is that they probably are not getting uh, the water that they require to stay as healthy as they should be. My thought, but well, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm not the expert, but I didn't see any water in the area at either end. Uh, where I got on or where I got off. Somebody suggested to me that I was uh, going, uh, that I ended up in Labangan. And not sure if that, I've looked at a map and uh, not real sure here in a little bit. We're going to get on some real narrow streets. And we're going to slow down a bit. Uh, but anyway, maybe somebody will be able to recognize the areas and tell me in the comments I at the time I did not think to bring my mapping app up on my phone I use maps.me uh, works very well for me I prefer it over uh, Google Maps uh, I think they actually are tied into Google Maps in some areas at some times uh, but anyway it, they are actually maps that I download and they up they update uh, relatively regularly uh, with new additions, and so I have I have downloaded the uh, the Visayas, and as well as Mindanao, and I think I even have Luzon on there. And so then you don't need an internet connection to see maps, which is nice. I've got enough memory on my phone. I think 32 gigabytes internally and haven't had any issue with it running okay. out of space. Right. I'll do another video about phone soon. I've found uh, some additional websites and information for determining if your phone will work overseas and then again uh, which uh, frequencies you have and how well it will work overseas. So I've, I've noticed that uh, some phones have many more uh, channels uh, than other phones and there are different channels different countries around the world and you might have uh, you might have two of the channels that work in another country but not 
not the five or six or seven channels that are being used in the country. I think the high temperature today was in the in the 90s, and uh, I've acclimated pretty good here. And he, here's this kid. He's a couple times latched to honey, grabbed the gate. That they don't close the gate back here because uh, the the CD is pretty tight and. Uh, one person usually has their leg hanging out the back, I think. Anyway. So I thought this was a I thought this was a tourist attraction all the time. It turns out it actually is a mode of transportation. A lot of people take it. It's uh, a couple pesos more than than a jeepney, but uh, you don't see many jeepneys, especially on these narrow streets. And uh, the, the tricycles and, and the hobble hobbles, the ancas, they're all going to cost more than 10 pesos by a whole lot. Ten pesos. Ten pesos for the free ride. <laughs> A couple of years ago I was walking around downtown and I came across uh, a bunch of horses like this as well and it was five pesos. And uh, I asked them where they go, and they says, uh, where do you want to go? And I really didn't know where I wanted to go, so I passed on that at the time. I thought maybe they just did a circle, kind of like a tourist ride again. Uh, but anyway, now I've gotten off, and I know we were going into the sun the whole way, and uh, we only turned a couple times, so I decided I was going to walk. I got a lot of attention, a lot of attention, and everybody was really friendly, really interested. Uh, they very, very, very rarely see any foreigners in this part of the town. I am a citizen of the universe. Where? No, Where? America. America. Yeah. How old are you now? I am 18. 18? Yeah. <laughs> in, in my mind, I am 18. Wow. <laughs> I'm the top 21. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> you single? I am. Uh, you are a single I, I, I live here. I, I live here four years already. Where? Well, Lahoog and Mandawi uh, and Zapatera. Lots of questions. The second question, almost every conversation with new people is, where's your wife? Are you married? Oh, I have a girl for you. Anyway, this is where I found the horses, uh, downtown Cebu City. Not sure where it was exactly, but not very far from Carbone Market. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Safe travels to you all wherever you're at, and I'll see you next time.